Hey guys, it's me, Callie. Today I'm really excited to be sharing with you how I created this adorable tabletop Batty-mobile. I made it out of polymer clay, some wire, some beads, and a couple other items I had laying around the house. I know you're going to love this project. It's great for kids of all ages. It came together really simply and quick. And stick around. I'm happy to show you how I did it. Okay guys, let's get started. I've preheated my oven to 275 Fahrenheit and the first thing we're going to want to do is create our bat template. I've just done this very simply on a piece of cardboard. I freehand drew a bat and cut it out. I colored this one in with a black sharpie. Um, if you're not confident in your drawing skills, there are many, many free graphics online. Just Google, you know, free bat silhouette images and you'll find some. So once you have your image and whatever size you want, but I'm going on the smaller size, um, you're going to want to prepare your clay. Now I'm using uh, Primo Clay by Sculpey. I have black. You can use whatever color you want. Um, if you don't have the color of your choice, you could always paint your clay afterward with acrylic paint. So there's many things you can do to change your colors, but we're just going with straight up black. And I'm going to condition this really nicely. Now you can roll this out with a rolling pin, or if you have a pasta machine like I do, you want to roll your clay out to the thickest setting, which for me is a 1. And I've already done that. And I like to work on glass, so I just have this piece of glass here. And we're literally going to use our bat as a little pattern. Now that's going to be hard for you to see, but I just have laid it on here. And you can either use a plastic knife, you know, better with kids, or if you're confident and safe, use an X-Acto knife. And you're just going to cut around the bat, okay? and you will be left with, you know, you want two of these, okay? So I do like to work, um, I'll bake on this tile here, but we have two bats now, and the next thing we're going to need to do is attach our hangers. Now I want a hanger on top and a hanger on the bottom so we can hang some beads. And I'm just using a very simple head pin, or this is an eye pin, I'm sorry. Um, those of you familiar with jewelry making and bead making are familiar with these. But if you don't have these, you can just use a simple piece of wire and make a little loop at the end. Um, I have some round nose pliers here. And pretend this was just a simple piece of wire. You can just grab it at the bottom and twist it and make your own loop, okay? So don't be afraid to improvise um, and make your own things that you need. Um, yeah, you can even use an unbent paper clip or something, okay? So look around. Um, I have two of these and I've already bent them the way I wanted to, uh, which is kind of like a fish hook shape. All right, so I have this little eye at the top and this little hook here, and that's basically just to help our help it stay in the clay. Okay, so I am going to position these on our bat with this part at the bottom hidden in the clay and this little piece at the top. Make sure that you have enough headway sticking up there because you want to hang it. And this one, I'm going to just turn upside down and put it on the bottom, kind of the same way. All right. Now, um, I'm going to use some bacon bond, Sculpey bacon bond at this point to adhere our back pieces together. If you don't have this, you can use PVA glue, something like Aileen's tacky glue. Um, or anything like that. But I'm just going to, or if you don't have any, the clay will adhere to itself if you press it together. So I'm just going to lightly 
put this here just to reinforce it a little and then we are going to put our pieces together okay and I have some simple tools here again you can use anything a knitting needle little I don't know things you can poke and, and prod with you want to be careful you don't want it to stick to the clay but I'm basically just going to go around these edges here and kind of squeeze them together okay and when I have that all kind of done I'm going to just for the purposes of right now pretend I, I will play with this a little back and forth um, just to seal everything up here but once I've done that you have a couple choices here now I'm going to make this very whimsical um, kid friendly if you will and use googly eyes but if you'd like a more serious looking bat you could always use uh, regular black beads make sure they're uh, glass you don't want to melt plastic um, but if you were choosing that you could embed them in the clay right now like I said I'm going to do googly eyes so I have this little ball tool here and I'm just going to uh, that's actually kind of big but let's see I have another one I'm going to just make my eye sockets right here and then let's add some details again I apologize it's a little tough to show but I'm just going to kind of add details around the wings and this is all texture that we will be highlighting uh, after we bake it and then let's outline this little body you could do little mini feet if you want um, let's texturize his little chest okay I want, I want texture everywhere and I am going to do front and back obviously not the face but yeah speaking of the face we can kind of and then some nose holes make some ear detail okay some lines in the wings the more texture the better okay I think so and again I'm going to kind of do that on the back as well and when I'm done with that we're going to pop it in the oven and before we do that we're going to make our stand okay so I'm just going to set this guy aside and before you bake it you can add mica powders uh, like a prolex powder um, I have let's see right here you could use eyeshadows um, these are just powders to bring out texture and things like that but I'm going to wait until after we're done um, I will put all the links to everything I use in the description box below okay so we're going to set this aside for a second and the next thing we're going to do is make our hanger so I am choosing to use some copper wire which I'm actually going to paint but this is 16 gauge and I got this in the hardware department um, it's fairly cheap and it's pretty strong you want something that's not too flimsy okay so what we're going to do is start to make a spiral so I'm just going to you know I like to work off the actual roll here and I have some various pliers okay 
And to start our spiral, I'm just going to, and again, this is, you know, pretty sturdy wire, so <coughs> the flimsier the wire, the easier it is. But we're going to take it here and just get it between, and I'm going to just roll this, okay, and then readjust and roll it. Okay, just like that. Now, I don't care about the perfection of the spiral because we're going to be covering it up, okay? So I don't mind if I mar up the wire. And I'm just going to hold this wire and work the wire around. Okay, going real slow. And like I said, I don't mind. If you're worried about marks on your wire, I have these kind of cushioned nylon nose pliers that you could also use to hold it. And just kind of go slow and let the wire be your guide, okay? Now, I've already started one here. I love spirals. They're great for all kinds of things. So you're going to continue your spiral doing the same technique all the way around until you get something that looks like this. Okay? Now I want, I also have here, a glass gem from the dollar store. These are great for all kinds of things. And I also have this metal washer. Now these are strictly for weight and shape. Okay? So I've made my spiral and I also made a little hook at the other end. You can kind of make these as big as you want. This is about, I don't know, 12 to 14 inches maybe. I did not measure, but you kind of get a, and you can play with this afterwards to adjust. This is where our bat is going to hang from, and this is going to be our base, okay? So on that base, we're going to put a washer and a stone, okay? And you can use some aliens if you'd like. Let's see. Or, uh, I guess, well, the, the bacon bond's not going to really work. We're going to be encasing this in clay anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But you want this weighty enough, and it will be, you know, it's falling over right now, but uh, with the clay on it to create kind of like a rock looking thing um, that will be strong enough to hold your bat without falling over, okay? It's hard to show you from this angle, but you can see it is standing up now. Now again, with the weight of the bat, we'll adjust it later, okay? So the next part is to cover this base with clay, okay? So I'm just going to roll this out, and it does not have to be precise, you guys but I want to cover the bottom as well and I'm going to do kind of a rough cover and then I'll smooth it out and make it all nice but because this is going to look to me like a rock formation um, the more irregular it is the better for me you do it however you want okay so we're going to cover all that I'm going to take some more, get it the way you like it, neaten it up if you want, get all the air bubbles out, you know, just press around, play with it. That's the fun of polymer clay for me, anyway. Um, and also, at this point, I want to add a little texture here. So, I have a cling stamp 
You can use anything. I've used anything that will put texture on, but it just brings out all the detail once it's done. So I'm literally just going to take this stamp and press it in all around the base. Alright, and now we are ready to bake our pieces. So I'm going to still play around with these a little bit off camera, but I'm going to put them in the oven for about 40 minutes, okay? And I'll see you back here when they come out of the oven. Okay, well that stuff's baking. Let's make a charm, and I have these little spider charms, and I thought I would add some beads as a dangle. This is optional. You could hang a bow, a ribbon, nothing at all. But I chose to do this, and back to the eye pin again, or a piece of wire or string, and you're just going to string your beads right on the eye pin. So I've already kind of pre-done that, and we'll add the last one here. In whatever arrangement you'd like, we're going to dangle the spider from here and hang it from here. But to close that loop, I'm just going to kind of go like that, and then come up and around. I'm going to adjust my pliers here. And you guys, there are many tutorials on YouTube of people who actually <laughs> know how to do this stuff well. But you get the idea. Okay. And then I'm just going to adjust it a little and then you know not too bad we're gonna cut off this little tail here okay but for now I can leave it open and just like a jump ring instead of opening it like this you're gonna open it like this and I'm just going to slide in a little spider charm Spider charm. Okay. And then we can cut off the little end there. Sorry guys, this is awkward because it's small and I'm reaching. Wear safety goggles if you must okay so there there's that and same thing you open this top loop with your pliers just by turning it like a jump ring okay and that's you can either put a mother jump ring in there okay to dangle from the bottom of the bat or you can actually use this piece right here so there's those and I'll see you back when everything's baked. Okay, we're out of the oven and cooled down. I want to work on the base first. Looks really cool. Um, if you like the wire, the color that you have it, you can leave it. But I wanted to paint mine black. And I use this Americana Multi-Surface Satin. And literally, just went in and painted the wire black and let it dry overnight okay that's an option and I'll show you one that I've already done that's dry or you could use some of your metallic rubs um, I have this rub and buff in antique gold and they're just wax based um, 
highlight creams, but I like silver and I love these Decoart metallic lusters. So you could also just, you know, rub some of that on the wire if you choose and let that dry. While I have this out, and you can use a brush, I always use my finger. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I'm just going to take a little bit and use it on the bottom of this base here. And as I'm putting it, I'm kind of rubbing it at the same time. And I love how this looks over the black. It just, and look at the texture that's coming out there, guys. If you feel like you put too much, you could always go over it again with some of that acrylic paint, play with it back and forth. Uh, but once you have what you're looking for, you're going to want to seal it. And I have some of this Sculpey Gloss Glaze. You could use any kind of compatible with polymer clay type glaze. Um, so there's that, and I'll show you one that I already have completed, which is right here. And you can see the black wire, which is very, you know, moldable, malleable. Um, and this is nice and weighted, okay? So next, we have our little bat. And again, you have some options. If you want a more serious looking bat, you know, the eyes really make or break these things, so... But I had my grandkids on the brain, and googly eyes are always a lot of fun. If you don't have any of these, you could use acrylic paint again. Um, but I'm just going to take some of my Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue and just put a little dab in each eye socket and add a googly eye, and it instantly takes on life. Okay. Something like that. And then, and actually I should have probably thought of doing this first, but I'm going to, I also have this really cool um, that I got in some happy mail this Nouveau Embellishment Mousse, and look at this color. Love this, okay? So I am going to take a brush with that, and you only need a little bit of this stuff, you guys. And I'm going to, again, I, if, I would wait to put the eyes on until after you do this, but I just got so excited. I'm going to just kind of paint in between the wings here a little bit. And Okay, however you want. And I'm going to highlight, but just look how that just adds to everything. I am going to add some of the silver, again on a brush, just because I, I want it to be a little more precise, but you can do these however you'd like. Keep it all black if you want, but I just want to kind of outline this and use my finger to smudge it out, kind of bring out the detail on his body and the face. You could add little white fangs if you want uh, with acrylic paint. Okay, so. When you have him all detailed out, or her all detailed out the way you want, then again, you're going to want to glaze it, um, which will help preserve all this nice mica powder and everything, okay? And I have another one that I've done. So I would work on that a little more. 
uh, and do the back as well. But I do have one already completed and I hung the charm on this already just how I showed you before and this has already been glazed and I did just add a little jump ring at the top there uh, one of these and then it's all set to be hung okay and I'll show you this sideways but I was thinking of doing a different um, character for Halloween next year. You know, you could do ghosts or pumpkins, anything. All right, I'll let you guys see this uh, standing up, but like I said, you'll adjust it for where it's going to hang without falling over, but that is that. What do you think, you guys? Was this a lot of fun? And this is a versatile hanger, too. I mean, you could use it for a lot of different things, right? I had a blast making this, and I hope you did, too. So give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you check out all my links below. And I will see you guys very soon. Peace and love, and happy Halloween.